Hi. So often we run into situations where we need to concatenate two or more sequences. Now we can certainly use the plus operator to do this. Let's take a look. So we could do this. Let's create some lists. So I'll create a list with range four. Then I'll create another list. And this time I'll use a range from four up to, but not including eight. And then I'll have another list that will be also based on a range. And then we'll go from eight to 11. Uh, 11, so then we'll go to 12. So we have those three lists, right? So if we look at L1, L2, and L3, these are the three lists that we have. Now we can combine them. Let's go ahead and do that using the plus operator. And so once we have that, we can go ahead and just print it out. I'll uh, print it out this way for EL in combo. We'll print EL and then I'll do an end equal to just a space like so. And so this is our concatenated list. But this approach can be costly. And the thing is that the complexity is quadratic. So if you're looking at the big O notation for this kind of algorithm for adding sequences together using the plus, it's an n squared operation. So instead, we can use the chain method from the iter tools module. And the chain operation is an O n operation. It's linear. So let's take a look at that. So from editor tools, we're going to import chain. Now, chain is actually a little bit more versatile than concatenation in that we can mix sequence types with chain, something we cannot do with concatenation. For example, let's take this list, one, two, and three. Then let's take another tuple and let's do four, five, and six. And then I'll take another iterable, a string which is really just an iterable of characters. So like so. So we have these three. Now, if we try and do L1 plus T2 plus S3, well, that's not going to work. We get a type error because we can only concatenate lists to lists. We cannot concatenate these different types together using the plus operator. Chain, however, can handle that no problem. So we can do this. We can say for EL, in and we use chain and the way we use chain is we just basically specify as positional arguments the different iterables that we want to chain together so in this one i want to chain l1 then t2 and then s3 and if we do this now i can go ahead and print el and equals like so so i can loop through this chain print each element out and as you can see that works just fine so we had one two three four, five, six from the tuple and X, Y, Z from the string. So given the complexity difference, we should really expect faster run times for the chain approach. So let's try it out and see how that pans out for concatenating a large number of lists. So from time it, we're gonna import time it, and then let's create some large lists. And I'm gonna do that using a list comprehension. We'll say a list range, let's say 1000. So this is going to be a list with 1,000 items, and I'm going to repeat that 1,000 times. So basically, I have a list of lists, right, for range 1,000, like so. Now, to concatenate these lists programmatically using the plus operator, I cannot use plus itself because I would have to write code out, you know, that would include 1,000 pluses. So instead, I'm going to use the corresponding special function, which is called dunder add. That's what the plus actually calls. It calls the dunder add method in those classes, in the list class, when you're concatenating. When you say L1 plus L2, it's actually doing L1. So if we take L1 equal one, two, three, and if we say L2 equals four, five, six, when we write L1 plus L2, like so, we're actually doing this. We're calling the dunder add method and passing it L2. So we call it from L1 and we pass it L2 and we get the same thing. So we're going to use this dunder add method to perform the addition, to perform the plus. Now we have to do this on a thousand things. So I'm actually going to use the reduce function that's in the func tools module. And I also want the add operator that's in the operator module, which is really just going to call the dunder add method. So let me show you that. Let's do a couple of imports. So from func tools, we're going to import reduce. And from operator, I'm going to import add. So the way we're going to concatenate those lists, let's call it concatenated. 
and that's going to be we're going to reduce and what fun which function are we going to use we're going to use the function add which is really just going to call the dunder add method it's going to take two arguments right two lists where are they coming from they're coming from lists so i'm going to reduce it this way and then what i'm going to do i'm not going to print the actual result i'm going to print the length of concatenated And there we go. So you can see that we have 1 million elements in this concatenated result because we had 1,000 lists of 1,000 items. So that's how reduce works. You can take a look at the documentation if you're not familiar with it. So let's go ahead and write a couple of functions because we want to time things. So I'm just going to basically encapsulate things in some functions. So concatenate is just going to return reduce, add, and lists. That's the first function. And then for chained, which is also going to take the same lists, we're going to return. Now, I need to return the chain of what? Well, I need to chain all the lists that are in lists, right? Because lists is a list of lists. So I need to unpack basically the lists that are in that list variable. However, we have to be careful because chain is an iterator and it is not going to actually create the new list. It's just going to give you an iterator. So it executes very, very fast because it hasn't actually done any work until you start iterating through the elements. And this is why up here I ended up doing this list, right? So I ended up iterating, I should say, through the chain. So here I have to do the same thing. So I'm going to basically make a list out of that. So by passing it to list, the list object is going to iterate through that iterator and create a new list. So these are the two functions we want to time. Let's go ahead and time it. So we'll time concatenate and then we'll pass in lists. And then I'm going to pass in my globals. That way the time it will have access to that. And we're just going to run it one time and let's see what happens. So it took 1.09 seconds. Now we're going to do the same thing. So I'll copy and paste this code, but I'm going to use chained. So we'll do that. And as you can see, 0.019 seconds. Of course, depending on your machine, your mileage may vary. So as you can see, chained is actually much faster than using the concatenate, using the plus operator. Now for the special case where we're dealing with character sequences, strings basically, we can also use the join method available for strings. Let's see how it works. So I'm going to copy paste a couple of variables from the notebook, which is available in the GitHub repo as usual. And we can concatenate these sequences this way. We could say dot join, right? So basically I'm using a join and I'm not specifying anything in the string. So it's just going to basically join them together with nothing in between. And I'm going to join what? I'm going to join L1, L2, L3, L4. So I have to pass join expects not a, you know, a variable number of positional arguments. It expects an iterable. And so I'm going to pass in the iterable by making it into a tuple first and then passing it to join. So if we do this, it's going to join all these four strings. Now let's time it and see how it performs compared to the other options. So let's import a few things. So we're going to import random. I'm going to import the string module and then from it tools, I'm going to import repeat and we'll see how we use all of those. So the first thing is I'm going to set my seed to zero. I'm going to set it to a specific value. This way I have a repeatable uh, set of random numbers. And then I'm going to create these strings. So I'm going to create a bunch of strings and I'm going to do that by saying join. And then I'm going to do a random choice. So I'm using the choice function from the random and I'm going to pick a random choice from what? Well, I'm going to take it from the ASCII characters. So for that, I can use the strings modules, ASCII uppercase, let's say. And I'm going to repeat that. Right. So remember, the join needs an iterable. So I'm going to take random choice for 
and I don't care about the loop variable. I'm just going to repeat things a certain number of times. So I'm going to do it this way. I've got a video on the using repeat instead of using a regular for in range, for example. So I've got that string. That's a single string, right? Which is basically going to take a thousand characters randomly selected and then join them together into a single string. So I'll have a string like this, just filled with random uppercase characters. And this string itself, which is, I'm going to call it strings to indicate it's more than one. I want to generate multiple of those strings. So I'm going to say for that in repeat none, and then we'll do thousand as well. So now we have a thousand strings, each of a thousand characters. So we can go ahead and print the length of the strings, for example. We can look at the length of the strings zero. Let's take the first string in strings. And we can also look at, let's say, some value like strings. We'll take the first string and then we'll print the first 20 characters from there. So as you can see, we've got a thousand strings. The strings are themselves a thousand characters. And this is the first 20 characters from that string just some random strings. So now let's write one more function to do the concatenation of all these strings using joint. So joint strings, and really we're just going to return, basically we're going to join all those strings. So we're just going to pass it the iterable string. Strings is a list, okay? Of lists. So it's an iterable, which is fine for join. So that's all we need to do there. Now, we can't really use chain in this context unless you want to iterate over the characters of the combined strings, since chain returns an iterator over each character, and we would have to join those characters into a string anyway. So we can just join the strings directly. So we won't be able to compare this to chain for this particular case. Now let's make sure that each function returns what we expect. So result concat is equal to concatenate strings like so, and then result joined is equal to joined strings like so. And then let's just make sure that they're the same. So let's assert, for example, we can use the assert statement or I can just look at the Boolean expression and then result joined like so. The assert doesn't raise an exception, which means that the result was actually true. Let's take a look. As you can see, it's true. So now let's go ahead and time it. So we're going to call the time it function. We're going to pass it concatenate strings. Then we'll have globals equals globals. And we're going to do this, let's say, 10 times because it runs pretty fast. So as you can see, it took 0 0.145 seconds. That's using the concatenation, using the plus. So that's actually decently fast. Now let's go ahead and do time it. But this time, actually, I'll just copy paste this. This time, we're going to use the joined. So I'm going to call joined. And remember, they produce the same result. It do this, they do the same work, essentially, or produce the same result. And you can see it's substantially faster, 0.0014 seconds in this case. Now, a special case of string concatenation is when we have a predetermined and relatively small number of strings we want to concatenate. Let me show you an example. Let's say we have s1 equals python and then s2 equals rocks, like so. And let's make this lowercase. So we could do this. We could join these two strings using the several approaches, some of which we've seen already. So s1 plus, we'll put a space, plus s2. We get python rocks. So that's good. We could also use the join. In this case, I'm going to use a space for the join and then join. And then I'm going to pass it the tuple S1, S2. So you'll notice I have to create a tuple here with S1 and S2 in it because join expects an iterable, not a variable number of arguments. And so we get the same result. Now we can also do it this way. We could go ahead and use the format function. So or the format method of strings. So we can do it this way and say format S1 comma S2. And we get the same thing. There's also an older style of doing string interpolation. We could go ahead and say um, percent %s% %s to indicate it's a string. 
and then we're going to interpolate and now we have to create another tuple with s1 and s2 and we'll get the same thing and you may have seen that in all the python code the last one that we have is f strings we know all about f strings and we use them quite a bit they're very simple to use so we can interpolate s1 and s2 this way put a space in between and we'll get the same result so now let's go ahead and actually time this because these timings may surprise you so let's go ahead and say time it and then we'll use the string concatenation so we're going to do an f string here now i'll use single quotes so i don't have to escape them because i've got double quotes on the outside like so and then we'll do globals equals globals and then we'll run this quite a few times because in this case we're only doing a single concatenation so we'll run this 10 million times and that took 0.51 seconds now let's repeat this and let's do it with the plus operator so we're going to do the join this way s1 plus space well i'm going to use single quotes here plus s2 like so let's time that we get 0 0.58 a little bit slower and then we can finally use the join so let's go ahead let me copy paste this and if we use the join we're going to do it this way we're going to say space dot join and then we have to create s1 s2 as a tuple and pass that to join and then we can run that and we get 0 0.68 which is again a little slower than the previous one so yes join is actually slower in this case because we have the overhead of creating this tuple every time and then finally let's look at the old style approach so we'll take that and then basically we're doing this right this one this one over here so let's go ahead and write that in so we're going to say that percent s space percent s single quote percent and then we have to create the tuple s1 s2 and that should be good enough so let's go ahead and run this and you can see that one is even longer 0 0.96 seconds and again because in part we have the overhead of creating that tuple and then finally let's look at the format method which is the first one we looked at right this approach over here using for the format method so again i'm just going to copy paste this and then we're going to do this so for, uh, we'll take the string itself so we'll do that space that and then we're going to format and then pass it s1 and s2 now we're not creating a tuple here format takes an you know arbitrary number of positional arguments and let's see what we get well that's even slower 1.16 so as you can see f strings is actually the most efficient way of combining of you know concatenating two strings so when you have a small number of strings that you're concatenating you really want to prefer using an f string over something like this for example right this is something that you might commonly see written in code that's actually relatively inefficient compared to f strings it still runs pretty fast it's decent but f strings are a little bit faster now the usual caveat I give when I discuss optimizing your code, do not optimize prematurely. Write your code in the most readable manner possible without a total disregard for efficiency, of course, but don't start optimizing your code and refactoring until you understand where your code is slow. All right, thanks for watching.